Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Steam on Linux is dead! Well, according to PC World and Feral Gempshoop Stonehenge, using technology that we have to die. With GDevelop, you can write games even if you don't know a thing about writing a line of code. Good luck if you do, though. An overgrowth has an update. Who gives a shit? Intel might finally get OpenGL 4.0 on Linux right after a nondescript amount of time. And our VGL snuck up on me this week. Then the muscle memory kicked in and I curbed it in two days. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits. Um, I'm doing all this nightmare fuel joined every week by a Team Canadian uh, podcast at Master's Fake. Hello, sir. How did they get those stones so high? I don't know, it's, man. It's consuming it's me. the biggest hinge oh. I've ever seen, and all the way from Space Portugal. Um, Hello, I have no idea what the fuck says. And together with Chat Realm Dynamic, you help us form the last and most important bit of Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Gentlemen, I'm going to start first. Pro tip, if you're working with a binary epoxy, which is like super glue on cocaine, wear gloves. That, that's all I'm so going to say about that. Did you glue it's, it's, your it's a good plan. together? No. Now, what's up, Jerry? Uh, how, how many layers of skin are you missing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not much happening this week. Aside from some interesting times debugging issues with the game we're reviewing. Yeah, I uh, actually went to an interview to a job that pays considerably better than the one I have now and doing basically the same thing with a heavier focus on security. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Well, he's, um, he's the master of two-factor authentication. Let's but, be honest, uh, uh, something that is uh, actually concerned about security this week, j -Man. I thought we were doing the public service announcements. Uh, the announcements. Oh, yeah. Announcement. No, I just put that in <laughs> we there. We do have it. a bit of a PSA. Ah, yeah. well, I guess we'll save that for later. And it's our Steam <laughs> Linux. Update. That was even jankier than usual. It's brilliant because Linux usage on Steam continues to fall despite this, uh, what's his name? Chris Hoffman not knowing fuck and all what he's talking about. Yes, you heard it here first. Um, I think we should just start saying, uh, you know, uh, hit, hit the lights out, you know, on your way. We're done, yeah. yeah. Pack it up. I mean, it's, 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 it's closing. A couple things in the article. I mean, he says, despite Valve's push, to which I retort, um, Brad, uh, Valve hasn't push. pushed <laughs> Jack or Shite, son. I mean... Seriously, we're still waiting on Rocket League, Street Fighter V, because Valve Time trademark. But that didn't discourage him. He continued, Valve gave away a free Tux promotional item to everyone who signed Team Fortress 2 for, um, from Linux, uh, a move that encouraged a lot of Windows gamers to try Linux. Pedro, was that really the case? No, no, no. There was even an EXE file that would set up the VM for you and install Windows on whatever version of Ubuntu it was at the time. Launch TF2, and there you had it. But yeah. he directly cited that in the article as saying that that's when it was at its peak. Maybe. No, I, I know, right? <laughs> in, in, in installing a, a separate operating system to install TF2 to get a Tux plushie is what are what's driving people in droves to Linux for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, okay, maybe he got this right, which I think he did. It's possible yeah. that the new Open Standard Graphics API Vulkan, which was recently added to SteamOS, could help close the performance gap. Monkeys he got something and right. Typewriters. A broken clock is right twice a day, or three times. A day. Yeah, and <laughs> one of the things I really want to point out is that the. On the article, uh, the second paragraph, he says, The evidence comes from Valve's Steam hardware survey. It reveals that machines running Linux, including SteamOS... No, it doesn't fucking include SteamOS. Valve has come out and said so. It's not on SteamOS. The hardware survey only tackles desktop users. Hell, if you're though, using though, though, to big be, picture to be mode... Fair. To be yeah, fair, if it probably wouldn't, Steam, uh, wouldn't have increased the numbers much anymore either, so... If, yes, the, but the, even the if you're using Steam Deck picture mode success. on the desktop, it wouldn't actually count you because the survey simply would not show up. So, yeah. 
<laughs> well, even thinking about those surveys, I, I mean, there were uh, there was the one I received when I was trying to install something via Wine to see if we could get up and running, and I was like, oh, survey. And the second time, me and Jordan were it was like after show, and it popped up, and I was like, <gasps> well, I, I I mean, there was that time I got two. Quit bragging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever since the beta for Steam on Linux started, I think I have two, and the last one was like a year ago. <laughs> I get I get maybe once every time I upgrade in yeah. and around that. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, apparently Valve is a bit more concerned with security and promoting their shitty Android app as a two factor authenticator. Now they have uh, they ha uh, a while back they implemented that system that if you wanted to trade some items from your Steam in inventory, you would have to wait a couple of days unless you use a two-factor authenticator in order to sign off on the trade and it would be immediate, as it were. Now they're increasing that and the duration now, you'll have your trades put on hold for 15 days if, you don't, if you're not using the two-factor authenticator. And the community market, if you sell an item through the community market, you'll only get the money after 15 days. So, yeah, I mean, I get it, but they're trying really hard to push that shitty Android app they call a Steam client. Well, I, the, I mean, for, for, your, for pure two-factor authentication, it isn't bad because I don't even need to have the app running. Because when I when it, whenever it prompts me for it, it pops up on my phone right away and says, hey, here's a code. Doop, 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 done. Swipe it away. Yeah, just give it, give me something lighter, something that works as an authenticator only, like what Blizzard does. Whenever I want to log into my Blizzard account in order to play, I don't know, Hearthstone, I get a little notification on the phone, and it's just that. It's just a two factor thing. There's that, no that, that, other That's cruft. what I said it has. So I don't know what you're talking about. It would be nice, though, if you could hook it into Google Authenticator, though. Or uh, provide some other things like uh, YubiKey or anything like or, that. that would I be mean, neat. just shoot you a text message. My biggest issue is like, well, what's your mobile? And I'm like, well, I'm Valve, I, you're not getting that. You can have my Google Voice number. He's like, that's not a valid number. And I was like, eat a bag of dicks. So, yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and of course, we got the reminder. If you're not using two-factor authentication, you deserve your account compromise. True, true <laughs> Victim story. Victim blaming. Never Victim been told. blaming. But soon, the Steam VR developer roundtable discussions were held, and well, basically, they, they talked about um, GDC is coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And like, hey, there's, there's some things that are going to be released, and I've seen a list, maybe that there's a lot of shit in development for the Vive that is like, what the hell? All right, that's definitely a thing, but I didn't see any Valve on that list, so that might kind of, you know. Pour some uh, water on your chainsaw there. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, have we ever heard any real commitment from Valve to put out some VR games? Really, they're trying to get on that bandwagon that Oculus started. I mean, they put out a superior product, but... And they didn't lie about the pricing, but they did the Oculus thing of, oh, yeah, we're going to support Windows first, and then we'll see in the future. It's what I said last week. I'm starting to question their commitment. I don't know. I it's think they're on it. It's a better love story than UWP. But I know. They're, they're <laughs> <laughs> they did mention um, in the forums, I think it was yesterday, and somebody was um, pinging and was like, so when are we going to get the uh, Linux sauce for the Vime? And they're like, Valve time. We're working on it, which is the fuck ever we get around to it. But that's better than Oculus, which you, you got to give him. What's his name? Lucky uh, Palmer. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah lay, lay in that smack Mac, get some good computers. As soon as the Macintosh, uh, the Apple brand releases a computer capable of running it, now we'll think about it. So that's definitely yep. a thing. Um, tell me about it, Morty. Morty, Morty, listen, you got to take these wave files and you got to shove them up your ass, Morty. I can't do it anymore. My asshole is too loose. I've done this too many times. Now this is the uh, Rick and Morty voice pack. Well, actually, just the Rick. Voice pack for XCOM 2. Scientists will normally shout stuff at you. This will replace it with Rick quotes, some of which take are taken from the Dota 2 voice pack, which was, as Vel, as Ben pointed out in the release, not the release notes, in the show notes, um, released by Valve. So that was, I don't know, fair use is kind of a bit of a stretch. I think it's a hell of a stretch. I mean, this is somebody pulling some clips and sticking it together. So uh, 
Uh. Watch the video. It's done fairly well, but you might want to grab it sooner or later and before it gets no payment. Do you think that will add to your XCOM going to give it to you experience? Not particularly. When I play XCOM, I like it to be as vanilla as possible. I never really dove into the mudding scene when it came when it came to that game. But uh, on the fair use bit, this is well, they're not making any money out of it right now unless Valve reintroduces the paid mods. And uh, yeah, so, Valve already. Uh, I mean, Valve already. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit sketchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is a bit you, sketchy. You know, you know, you know what Rick and Morty it. up my XCOM 2 experience? Either bird person aliens, gearheads, or the portal gun. I want the portal gun on my troops. It is still on the Steam platform, so I guess they can sort of kind of get away with it. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, mm. And. Oh, Soul Axiom, not Axiom Verge. God damn it, Ben! You and your subtle, <laughs> subtle, subtle troll. This is this is a uh, first-person explorer puzzle game where, again, you're trapped in a vicious computer world and you have to hack your way out, being a lead hacksaw. I mean, it kind of has a bit of the vector graphics going on. Sort of has a bit of a Bioshocky vibe, almost, at least with how you interact with the world. And it's on System sale for about fifteen bucks. So. I don't know. It's I mean, more system shocking. I mean, uh, Master Reboot comes a uh, story-driven adventure puzzle game set in a beautiful, haunting cyber world. Um... I, I, I mean, it, it's just like Hack and Slash, or that one with Dr. Venture in it, or the really pretentious one where you had to hide from the computer shutting down. I don't know, p uh, any, any game when I, when I see that hand reminds me of that, uh, what was that uh, whacked-out game we got to play? Uh, um... Oh, yeah, I know yeah, which one you're talking about. Yeah, the one that was sort of, yeah, in black and white and was in a beta and you could interact with yeah, the developers as they were going around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but... Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the one I was talking about. It had Dr. Venture in it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I can't remember its name, but it definitely has some of the same video game... Game over. Meta. That's what it's called. It, the very video game meta bullshit that's all the rage this day, uh, all, these days. Thank you, Undertale. Fuck you. It's a game time. within a game, Pedro. <laughs> but you know what? You can finally, finally make the Quake game you've always deserved. Uh, you guys remember Guncraft? Because I don't. I, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not going to undo those years of therapy. So no. Uh -huh. No, no, but apparently someone really does, and they felt like it, did, you know, Guncraft didn't do enough to look like Quake, and Minecraft had a bastardized free-to-play child. And there it is, that's Gunscape. They describe it as a, uh, easy, uh, it, that it provides easy-to-use tools based on the block placement, that's the Minecraft bit interface, everybody's already familiar with, because again, Minecraft. Uh, with to create familiar with the, uh, yes uh, to uh, all types of maps don't like building stuff then just blast your way through hordes of monsters or duel other players now this focus on user generated content uh, content is uh, lazy developer spiel for we couldn't be asked to make proper levels so here you go you guys can do it I don't know. I mean, you got to give them credit because they're using the ever elusive DX9 um, shader model. Ah, yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I looked at it and I was like, so it's a very shite version of Blockstorm. And Blockstorm uh, yeah. is Blockstorm. genuinely fun to play if you have some people to play with. But uh, this is also from the studio that not twice, but if three times tried to send us <laughs> review copies of this and I've just ignored them. And they're like, come on. It's like, no. Have, have, have their free-to-play game? Yeah. The only thing yeah, I can yeah, figure is because it those... is, it's free-to-play with the microtransactions, yeah. and you get the gold edition for thirty-three ninety-nine. dollars <laughs> If you play the free-to-play version, just, just have a good laugh. Download that, play it for four minutes, and delete it, and just be good Get, get your zero dollar Steam refunds. <laughs> <Right>. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. All right. Coming up next... Intel finally gets up to speed with their OpenGL drivers. Sort of, kind of. And we get to drag and drop some blocks. Not in, you know... I don't know, whatever the fuck this game was. Gunscape. Oh, hey. Glad you're joining us. You should be watching us live if you're not. But hey, if you watch us live or you don't, but you'd like to kick some shekels our way... We have several different ways that you can do that. Indeed. 
if you kick on over to linuxgamecast.com slash support the chosen, you can be the anti-meth smoking clown in a Waffle House and donate some money via our Amazon affiliate links. They're wonderful. They don't cost you a thing. We even have some Patreon donate buttons where PayPal or not Patreon, uh. PayPal donate buttons <laughs> where PayPal verified. But speaking Close of enough. Patreon, that's 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 a that's a cool segue, isn't it? Head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> brilliant market. We're at 132 bucks per train wreck. That's amazing. That means that with less than a little less than two dollars, we can get more episodes of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Episode four, or I guess it's episode three because we counted from zero, aired this week. So there's no more until we hit that goal. And you guys can make that happen. But you know what? If you don't have any money, you can't support the show. Like these lovely people. Uh, Leonardo, Mir, and Strider, you can just spread the word, you know, go out, go to your local post office, go to your local Waffle House, and just say, watch the next Gamecast to all the people while they're eating. Dressed as a clown. That too. Uh, back. A lawn chair. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so as usual, this is the news segment, and text. we like to start with some drivers. This week, we start with Intel's. Namely, what? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh what's his face from intel had some things to say er, i don't know his name i can't find it good old what's, In his, any case. Good old, good old what's his name <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh the last remaining bit of intel drivers in order for I go the Toral is his name by the way yes that's the one uh the last bit of uh, open source drivers for Intel that they're missing in order to support OpenGL 4.0 is the GLARB GPU shader FP64. And so that three this times is, yeah, this is Iago saying that, okay, uh, where you have it working, we just need to do some testing and it'll go upstream and hit whatever distro happens to support it first. That's good. It's, it's about goddamn time. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, really, all that means in a practical standpoint is you can play Metro Redux on Intel GPUs. But, you know, Metro OpenGL support's pretty nice. And at that point, they'll only be three extensions away for from full OpenGL 4.3 compliance, which is what you need to run basically every single Steam game out there, in yep. theory. To be fair, most of them actually just run 3.3. But, you know, yeah. I'd rather have them, like, focus on catching up... Um, on other features for the other drivers like I, I know this is an intel dev specifically committing it but there there are some bigger targets that uh, mesa can go after like better performance or feature parity with some of their amd and intel dri or not intel nvidia drivers <laughs> and um, <laughs> well maybe some intel open open source vulcan drivers for those other chips as well yeah i mean the intel uh, uh the intel drivers already support vulcan uh they have that working they have full open gles 3.1 compatibility it's not 3.2 yet or mesa still missing a few extensions on that but it's getting there and it would be really nice to have vulcan support for the amd open source drivers radeon si R600. It would work. Yeah. oh it's, yeah. it's coming the video said so <laughs> hail, hail AMD's video. It is the source of the true answers. All right, don't whine about it. All right, so uh, this is Wine 1.9.5, and this is the new development version. Most distros don't have it in the repos. If you're running Fedora, you get the staging branch, but it also uh, comes with these new improvements. I know a now, lot of people are looking at that. The heroes of the storm. Get a little fix for that. Yeah. Oh. But there's that, a there's that a couple of Blizzard MOBA. Yeah, there there's a couple of uh, things in the little blurb that they have at the at the start of the release page that say uh, beginnings of the Wine D3D command stream translation that CSMT for vanilla wine about time support for effect states in Direct 3DX more groundwork for the 3D11 that's cool bring it on and the new version of the Mono Engine with 64 bit support. And Microsoft just bought Zeverin. And it's closed source. <laughs> right. Not yet, but okay. it's, it's coming. Well, what are you we'll worried about, on. man? They've treated Skype well. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they, <laughs> and and they released that Visual Studio Editor for Linux. <laughs> sort of, kind of. Yeah. Well, what was yes, the last time that editor. got an update? Yes. Actually, someone answered that. Send us some hate mail to Patreon, LinuxCMCast.com. But speaking of programming, you know, 
For a long time, actually knowing how to code was a huge barrier for writing software, but not with GDevelop. <laughs> GDevelop from CompoGames.com, the links to all of this nonsense, by the way, is in our show notes. It lets you drag and drop some games without having to write a single line of code, much in the same way as MIT Scratch. And, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit of a purist. I, I think if you're going to learn computer science, you should actually learn how to code because drag and drop tools will produce unoptimized garbage. I mean, just look at Unity and uh, Earth 2066. <laughs> but, I mean, as, as a gateway drug, as something to get a small child interested in programming and introducing them to basic logic con concepts, I can see this being somewhat, uh, somewhat useful. Yeah, I mean, it definitely looks neat. I mean, it's priced to sell and it's completely open source, which, you know, mm -hmm. awesome on that. Love that. I mm -hmm. downloaded it, set it up. Drug a thing and his, my brain organ just rejected this. It was like, no, this is wrong. Delete it all. Pedro, did you play with it? I didn't. Uh, I was actually the one that put this in the notes because someone on our Facebook page, yes, we have one of those. Uh, What's Facebook? <laughs> Yeah, they left us a comment there saying, hey, have you guys seen this? It's a pretty nice tool. That person may or may not be involved with the development of said tool, but all right. Yeah, okay. That's free. You can download it. It's open source. So we'll put it in the notes. We'll talk about it then. Here we are. Seriously, though, what's Facebook? <laughs> I have no idea. It's a dick move, son. <laughs> oh, yes. Feral. All right. Feral, Feral Interactive. Move. Hashtag Monday Mystery. This comes from the long, long ago of Monday in the week beginning when the spring equinox, something marvelous will be revealed to the Linux. And look, they've photoshopped Stonehenge, it. where the demons uh, dwell, uh, where the penches live <laughs> and they do live. Yeah. Well. Um, so, uh, gents, under and over, I think everyone's thinking uh, it's going to be the Tomb Raiders. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, everyone was speculating that on Linux underscore gaming and on that same Twitter thread. So considering the EON alternative, I'm OK with this. Yeah. But how did Feral get those port costs so high without the advanced technology that we they have, have to die? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, who the fuck built the Stonehenge? Up next! Up next, it's our VGL. Yes, it's Revault, uh, the complete OpenGL engine re-implementation for that time vampire of a game from 1999. Oh, good lord, yeah. man. I, I could hear you squee from Portugal when you found out about this. Oh, yeah, this I'm, was amazing because I'm, I'm, I'm I love this game. Pizza, and by the time you're done ranting about this, it'll be here, so... <laughs> yeah, I love this game back in 1999, 2000s. Whenever I wasn't playing Fallout 2, I was playing Revolt. And as far as... Um, arcadey driving slash action radio control racing games go this is one of if not the best to this day and on my end it i just built it and it worked uh all the uh dependencies uh ven will probably mention one of his uh library things was conflicting with ffmpeg so that's a big no no but on my end so, everything so is this is this standalone or do you need the game files from the old games you need the this? game files yeah this is just a an engine re-implementation you still need all the data but at the moment i had it up and running i reverted to my 13 year old self playing this game and i finished the whole damn thing in like two days uh, they also have a multiplayer client that people can use uh, to connect to one another now that the original servers are dead. It works really well, actually. And the moment muscle memory kicked in, I finished all the championships, unlocked all the cars, got all the stars, uh, won all the races in the uh, clockwork mayhem mode that they have. Awesome. And Nora <laughs> came over and patted you on the head. Yes, that's true. But <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about... Um, it's not hey, open hey, source. Ben, ben. What? What? Open fire! Open fire has an update, you guys! See? No one cares. Wait a minute. I'm not done with my witty retort. Fuck off. Um, <laughs> See? No one cares. <laughs> In stereo. Um, no. Um, with the uh, Revolt thing, it's um, still 32-bit. It's not open source. If you're trying to run it on your yeah. Ubuntu 14.04 LTS, it's going to conflict with FFmpeg, GStreamer, and some other stuff. Then you're going to be playing Find the Libs. Just let's just wait for 64 bit or for them to actually open it up. But yep. let's talk about something uh, no one cares about. Yeah. But, yeah. See? 
<laughs> I, I told you. I told you. No, Overgrowth A28 has a video change log. And you know, are, are people actually still giving these people money? Because they're still asking for it on the Humble Store. Yeah, I think it's but, still like a 30 quid, too. So. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can load custom levels and there's some bug fixes. Ooh, that's exciting. When are you going to release this game, Wolfire? Tell me. I don't care. I we've lost the school girls joke. This we this is our doom pick <laughs> forever for Linux. I don't want to let it go, Brad. I hope it keeps uh, going. At, at this point, it's probably already overcooked. Nine years in development. When this game was first being developed for the Linux, I remember looking at it and going, "Man, this thing looks amazing! Balls! I can't wait till we get these types of graphics." And you look at it now, you're like, "Wow, that looks like some Unity trash." Uh, P man. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't have the school girls as a whipping boy anymore, or girl as the case may be but we do have carmageddon that's never coming to linux so. <laughs> well, the, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure their linux dead just died yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> man. i mean we, you can't even joke about that because this is never gonna happen but yeah. um a review is gonna happen our review is gonna happen yes we're we're dealing with space i'm um, no i'm sorry that's politically incorrect space dwarves <laughs> space and we're chasing people. rocks and getting murdered as we throw chairs at we are the dwarves Be true that nobody tosses a dwarf, but we're gonna toss some chairs at some. This is We Are the Dwarves from Whale Rock Games. It's a Unity game for about 15. Oh wow, it's 20 Canadian dollars. Goddamn exchange rate. <laughs> Ow. It hurts me every time I look at it. What is it? We Are the Dwarves is a real-time action tactical adventure game where you take control of three dwarven astronauts and get them killed over and over and over and over again. And these guys did send us some keys, so we gotta give them shout outs for that. So let's kick off the chairquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. We also got our categories. Oh, doom. Makes with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, Ben, did we are the dwarves make with the working? Well, over here on the Kumbuntu, 8150 powered, um, 980 displayed with the 4Ks. Ran all right. Um... Pretty did. Yeah. All right. It ran. Yeah. Um, that's about the nicest <laughs> thing we're going to say about this game from here on. However, let's just say let's talk performance with the 980s. Um, at 1080p, a solid 60. At uh, 2160, you're probably going to be dealing with the mid 40s, 45, something like that. But one thing it did. It produced the Unity Scream, Scream, Unity Scream of Nope. And you, you, you emitted the Unity Scream of Nope. It's, it's brilliant. Yes. I mean, you got to <laughs> like a boss. In 2016, and that is definitely a no-no, so you ding, lose a chair for that, period. But I'll give it three chairs. I mean, um, it ran. Yes, sometimes <laughs> when it when it felt like it. On the Fedora 22 64-bit powered Intel i7-6700K with the NVIDIA GTX 980. Um, yeah, I, I, well, of course I have to ding it a chair because of the Unity screen. That's just, that's just, no, it's 2016, guys. Come on. Um, and it gets another chair ding because I tried playing this in UHD without Steam Overlay on, so theoretically I shouldn't have any issues, right? Wrong! Basic functionality doesn't work. I'll get into it a little bit more later, but in short, the journal causes the game to go completely non-responsive, and the videos for the tutorial bits don't show up, which led to some embarrassing running and getting murdered a whole bunch until I realized, oh, you stay put. Two chairs. Yeah, uh, on the Amiga with the FX8370E overclocked at 4.2 GHz and the GTX 970 Strix, it ran. At first, it didn't have the Unity screen of Nope. They... <laughs> They actually added that in with a patch. That's the kind of brilliant decision that can only be taught at the Natural Selection 2 School of Development. Hey, developers, you fucked up. All right, then, motherfuckers. Here's the source code. You fucking figure it out. Of course, they also took a correspondence course from the a AMD University and have just decided to phone it in. As in, they're not actually giving you the source code. It's just a lazy pop-up because they couldn't be arsed. Three chairs. Okay. 
pretty sure Pedro had a point buried in there somewhere. But up next is Shiny and Sound. Oh, that's a total for that. Uh, did I not say it's two chairs for mix with the working? But yes, Shiny Sounds. Okay, you know what? The game actually is not fugly by any stretch of your imagination, Oregon. The levels, they're well done, and the dwarves definitely look the part. Unfortunately, the palette is based on the color dark. And that can make it extremely easy to bump into the baddies, which there are plenty of them. The voice acting, it does exist, but only one of them, I don't want to be dwarfist, but only one of them genuinely sounds like what you would think a dwarf sounds like. But do yourself a favor and listen, because reading that Google translated text very well <laughs> could break your brain organ if you have an issue with bad grammar like I do. Hashtag aneurysm. And if it had background music, I, I genuinely never noticed. So it looks all right. It's a bit dark. Um, it has voice acting. Doesn't really remind you of dwarves. And um, yeah, the text is really bad Russian to every other language on our planet with Google Translate. So you're, you're going to get two chairs for that business. You know, speaking of Google Translated subtitles, for extra fun, watch this review on YouTube with subtitles and enables. <laughs> there you go. Closed <laughs> captions. It's, yes. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, but so I love Space Dwarves. Um, the aesthetic is really unique. I like dwarves in space. It reminds me of 40K. It scratches that kind of itch. And the models certainly are on point. Everything looks pretty good. Zoomed into that little fucking box that you can't escape from at 4K at 1080 or whatever the hell it is. And uh, the voice acting actually reminds me a lot of the narration from the first Wizard album, Bound by Metal, which is a plus in my book. So that's I like it, I'll, I'll, at least from a visual and audio perspective. I'll give it three chairs. Yeah, well, Dwarves in Power Arbor will always look anachronistic, no matter what setting your game takes place on, except maybe 40k. But yeah, it is the natural progression. It is the natural progression of the Tolkienist dwarves. They're the stonemasons and the blacksmiths, so it makes sense that in the future they would be the ones lobbing around in big ass power armor. And it also makes them slightly taller, just in case they feel like the humans and elves are, you know, looking down on them. But yeah. <laughs> the uh, the voice acting was a nice touch, but every dwarf outside the first one that you play with in the tutorial, they all sound like they're out to make me look proficient in English, by comparison. Uh, the graphics look pretty damn good. It's just unfortunate that you can only see around six feet worth of graphics around your character at any point. But more on that later. Three chairs. All right, so that's two chairs for the shiny and the sounds. Up next is where it all goes downhill. Control, Ben, tell me about Mouth You're Slayer. acting like it's gotten off to a great start, brother. <laughs> oh, shall I elaborate? Um, Here's the thing. Uh, what, what would you call this? Kind of a top-down slant angle. Yeah, you know, Is, Isometric almost. Yeah, persuade a yeah, fox isometric. Yeah, isometric is fixed. Right. Okay, yeah. well, here's the thing. I can only spin the camera in a circle, and I just find that fascinating. I really do. I mean, fortunately, you can at least zoom in and... Uh, wait. Oh, for no, fuck's sake. Nope, nope, you can't do that. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me that I, uh, I can't change the uh, actual perspective. Uh, no. No, no, you can't. Holy fuck, Snacks. All right. If you're going to lock my field of view like that... Why the hell didn't they just make it a first-person shooter? So I'd have a fucking old idea. Maybe, just maybe, what was going all wrong? Because everything's going to go wrong. Now, let, let's talk about movement. Because this is um, Torchlight style. You know, you click, 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 and that's how you move. thing with this, th this has a new challenging mode because not all of the clicks actually register. More often than not, you'll need to click. Think about it. Gentlemen. Like when you're trying to pick up a gem, how many times do you have to click on that damn gem before it feels like, oh, yes, gem, maybe I'll pick this up, finally. And it's kind of sad because clicks shouldn't be suggestions versus actual control. Now, if you mix all that nightmare fuel together with a lack of a keyboard shortcut to lock onto enemies when shit gets actually real, you're just left with a click fest of nope that doesn't work half the damn time. And it didn't work with my Nintendo Power Pad. So, fuck this game, one chair. 
Did it work with your Logitech driving wheel, though? Yes. (laughs) All right, that's the important thing. But dear God, the camera control is just horrendous. (laughs) I don't know, maybe I've been spoiled with XCOM or Shadowrun or all these other games that let you control the camera, but I, I would maybe like some hotkeys to rotate that, because right-clicking and dragging it around, especially when you don't really have a pause option, you have the slow-mo option where you just die really, really slowly to try and find a good camera angle <laughs> is not fun <laughs> at all. And I, I, I ran into some issues, as I mentioned before, playing this game at UHD, because stuff doesn't actually show up, especially in the tutorial Videos that explain how moves work don't happen. They just give you a little text that doesn't really describe it all that well. The journal just doesn't show up. It crashes the game. And yeah, I, I mean, like the, the prime example of it is when you get the melee characters, the, there's that move that stops the dude from attacking you, right? Yeah, it doesn't show me the video that says I have to stay put and l- wait for that to complete. Because if you click away from something, it cancels the move you're already doing. Which, like Ven said, because clicks are more of suggestions gets you screwed over more times than not. And uh, honestly, the big crime here is if you're going to, if you're going to, if you can't move and use a move, then if I launch the move, lock my movement. Like, don't let me move anymore. Or else you're just going to cancel the move. Torchlight got that right. Satellite Rain got that right. You have no excuse. One chair. Yeah, I didn't actually have all those issues, uh, namely the ones where it didn't register to clicks because, uh, kind of worked for me but hey uh why can't i tilt the camera up and down why can't i zoom in and out why do indie developers feel like they have to reinvent the wheel in order to get their idea of mechanic slash plot across the exact way they want you to experience it oh it's a game it's an interactive thing no you're going to experience it the way we want it but anything other than that they didn't uh, reinvent the wheel pager they just kind of filed down a square yeah apparently but (laughs) hexagon (laughs) I actually lost count how many times I died because I procced a ranged enemy that was just far enough away not to show up in the very limited field of view that you can see at any time. And my character just dropped because I didn't even realize that I was losing HP on account of this game having shitty feedback. The combat is also about as satisfying and impactful as blowing spitballs at a concrete wall. Uh, Some game stipulations, as it were, like a wide-ranging camera in a third-person view game, exist for a reason. Hmm? Uh, Stop trying to reinvent the wheel, okay? It gets two chairs because I didn't have as many issues as Ben and Jordan did. All right, well, that's still one chair for control. But the real question is, after all of this nightmare fuel, then, did you have fun? It was brilliant, man. It was one of the best times I've had this week. I mean, outside of, like, um, gluing my hand organ together. Um, seriously, after 115 minutes and 11 <laughs> achievements later, I'm kind of stuck in a spot. And what's worse than that, gentlemen, I don't care. I, it's, uh, okay. I mean, this is 100% fuck you hard for the sake of being fuck you hard. And that works for games like Super Meat Boy and other things like that. Just not not for this genre. It's bad. Yes, I know they retro- retroactively added the easy mode, but all that does is it allows you to save. That's it. I mean, that's easy. And that doesn't fix the core issue, which is the controls, the controls, controls. Throws a chair, hashtag Steve Ballmer. Um... Having the movement and the camera controls locked to the gerbil, which you do, you got click and you got right click to move the camera. That's it, just beyond hella stupid. I mean, it basically forces you to use the slow-mo mechanic, which it has when you hit space, slows everything down, and you don't have to use that any, any time you want to attack more than one thing. And I guess that technically passes for real-time tactics, question mark. I'm not really sure, but... Maybe it passes for real-time tactics when the AI is not just flipping the hell out, you know, because that is another common issue you do. Um, if they had working camera control, I, I would probably have a different look on this critter because there are genuinely times where you can rotate, but when you're trying to look around the corner to get some idea, it will just block all vision. I mean, it'll just go black screen. That's racist. And that'll be the thing. And in a game where stealth is a thing, not being able to see fucks everything out of the gate, man. I mean, seriously. Because there's no wiggle room. 99% of the time, if you accidentally trigger a baddie, it results in a squad wipe or dwarf wipe. Show title. 
Um, that's not fun. That doesn't make people rage quit. That doesn't make people go to YouTube and go PewDiePie all over it. No, it causes them. Listen to this. It causes them to calmly close your game and request a refund, Brad, because that's what I would have done, but you gave us copy. One share. So when I when I when I saw this game at first, I'm like, ah, this is this is kind of cool. It's like Space Hulk meets Satellite Rain meets uh yeah. And except those games were competent at what they did. I, I, I really wanted to like this game because I, I love sci-fi fantasy mashup. That's one of my favorite genres. The game is a turd. What 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 could be a decent game is just completely just hamstrung by the awful controls Ben has gone and railed against them in the past. But I mean, it just goes. It needs to be reiterated. It's just bad. It's bad, Brad. Your 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 view is locked to this tiny portion of the map. Things will just come out of nowhere and murder you. Um, and you have to find stuff that blends into the background. It's like, oh yeah, it glows a little bit. Uh, if, if your if your camera is angled at the right location, otherwise it just doesn't show up and it takes maybe three, four passes of the map to actually find it. And then you just get like the nonstop dying because you didn't issue the correct commands in the correct order. So it just becomes this whole issue of trying it again and again and again with different combinations until you get the right one. And that's not fun. I can maybe play this game for about 15 minutes at a time without having to like get up and avoid smashing my face on my keyboard. Sorry, guys. I wanted to like it, but it's not a good game. One share. Yeah. At first, I was kind of iffy about this game because I started playing it and like, okay, there's nothing majorly wrong with it. So why am I not having fun? I mean, is it an RPG? Is it a single player mobile? I don't really have an issue with either of those. I like what I've played so far of Necro, and this is basically Diablo with World of Warcraft combat. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. This is a single-player linear progression MMORPG. I should have realized that from the sheer amount of achievements for killing X amount of Monster Y and the one-click combat. It's just like playing an RTS game where you control a teeny tiny regiment. Get it? Because they're dwarves? Never mind. Uh, the game racist. claims you're progressing, but it seems more keen to actively reward you with even more achievements for fucking up than when you actually make progress. There's, again, there's not one big thing wrong with the game that kills it. It's just a pile of small, nagging issues and mechanics, which are like someone played a tutorial for World of Warcraft and or Guild Wars over and over and nothing else. That's what kills it for me. Uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne can get away with fucking balls-to-the-walls hard combat because the combat in those games is actually skill-based. If you're fucked up, it's your fault. Here... It's trial and error, and that's bad, lazy, bad, bad, lazy game design. Uh, visually and audibly, the the game is it's it's sell it's I guess it's selling points. It looks and sounds great. It's a shame the mechanics are bare bones at best. One chair. So what 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 kind of game design was it again, Pedro? What? Exactly. One chair for fun. <laughs> and if we tally all that up, we get one chair for we are the dwarves. Gentlemen, what are your final thoughts? Well, mechanics make or break a game. I will tolerate shitty graphics or even put up with a completely dissonant, incoherent, or inconsistent story. Uh, Bound by Flame comes to mind. But if your game's uh, mechanics fail on a fundamental level, like it does in We Are the Dwarves, uh, to the point where I can't even enjoy caving in the skulls of alien goblins, I can't recommend it. I mean, for fuck's sake, you made mm. battling alien goblins boring. Really all I can say about this is um, every time you die, and that's pretty much all you do. This game was designed from the ground up. And I was like, haha, see how difficult we've made this? And it says, you are dead. So this is You Are Dead Simulator 2016. Yeah, really, if you want a fun tactical mashup of sci-fi and fantasy go play shadowrun returns or hong kong or dragonfall but up next we have some love for the open morrowind project and someone needs to face the wrath of the chairs in the hate mail section ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's my favorite segment of the show it's the hate mail we're not hitting on mails this week but we come close. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you know, the spiel by now, 
Just linuxgamecast.com, contact button, fill out the form. If you're trying to promote your game, send us some keys, send us some playable builds of your game. Otherwise, we'll just make fun of you. It's unfair. All right. So we have uh, someone from Tim Burton's latest movie. No, was it the latest movie? I don't know. Cheshire, he's got to send a little bit of love for a change, you know? And he's like, hey, yeah. I mean, it's kind of showed up on the YouTubes. He's like, hey, hello, friends. Thank you so much for this channel. It's because of this video I learned about the Open War Wind Project, our favorite psychopaths, by the way. <laughs> next, yep. to, next to the line, guys, of course. Subscribe to your videos. Keep going. I apologize for incorrect English. I'm from Soviet Russia. Well, let me tell you this. I'm Comrade. I'm... Um, is English very much better than most Americans? Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still a better love well, story. Is, than Eng- is English much better than this Portuguese motherfucker? Whoa, sorry, what, was, what accent was that supposed I, to be? I, I, I don't know, Moon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, well, well whatever it was. Uh, yeah. Oh, Emma. Is that, I don't think that's actually Monster Cameron. It's uh, a guy who follows us on Twitter. And he says, are we going to be throwing chairs at, and let's see if I can not butcher this title, because this is from Portugal, The Interactive Adventures of Dog Boy Mendoza and Pizza Boy. Mendonça. 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 Yes, it's a pizza boy. Uh, what is it? Based on the award-winning graphic novel series published by Dark... Okay, you have my attention. Under Uncover Supernatural... It's still point and click, though. It's- it, it, it's it's made in Godot though. Actually, these the the company that made this game is actually the, are actually the guys who make the Godot engine. So might be worth checking out. Uh, I mean, I'll have a go with it, Pedro. Uh, I've I've sent uh, <laughs> I've sent them some uh, email, just a singular one. Again, English not so good. <laughs> they haven't replied yet, but as soon as they do, and if they send us some keys, I'll uh, yeah. We'll throw some chairs at it. Why not? Mm, we we love point and click adventure games. We click from one side of the screen all the way to the other, and back, and back, and back, and back. And on that bombshell, let's cue the music, because you can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. I'm Vin Stone, I cleverly disguised on the Twitter nets at Vin Stone plus Vin Stone on the G pluses. I am Jordan Swung. You can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool. Or plus Jordan Swung on the Google Plus. And I was actually trying to do Russian accent earlier. I could not do it very well because brain it not be working so well. I am Pedro Mateos. You can always find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus. I, I think that was a Frenchman attempting an Irish accent. Hey, it's not, not a very good Russian <laughs> comrade. No, not very good. <laughs> Yet, 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 yet. He has had too much vodka. Not enough vodka. Yeah, fair enough point. It was actually whiskey, but whatever. Five dudes. <laughs>